Hello, I'm John and welcome to another of my Toon Boom Harmony tutorial videos. This series is called Basics and in it I am going to be showing you how to create an animation from scratch in Toon Boom Harmony. Now this is the third episode of this new series and in um, today's video I'm basically going to be showing you the paint tools and then colouring in the Batman character that I drew in the previous episode. So let's get cracking. There's a few tools to kind of go through but not too many today so it should be quite a quick video. So the paint bucket is this one here, which is the seventh tool down in my toolbar. It just says paint with a little paint bucket. And like most pieces of software, which I'm sure you use regularly, you basically select the bucket, um, select the colour that you want to fill, and then click in the area that you want to fill it. Simple as that, really. There are a few important things to mention, or very helpful things at least. Up in the, um, in the bucket kind of uh, tool property window, we have this little option here. It's like a horseshoe shape and it has close gap or close small gap, close medium gap, close large gap. And basically what that means is if I, if I just draw a shape for you, but I'm not going to join it up. So I'm going to go around and almost join it up, but not quite. So you'll see there, there's a little tiny gap. Let's try it again, it hasn't worked. There's going to be a tiny gap in between the drawings. Now if I go to that with close no gap, nothing will happen. But if I choose a different option, you'll see that it will close the gap for me, like so. Now we'll come back to that in a minute. The other really important thing I want to mention before I show you the other tools is these little buttons down here above the, the um, colours. You'll see that you've got a brush colour, a pencil colour, your fill colour, and then this little linking button. Now this really confused me when I, f I first started using um, Harmony because it, it, it really frustrated me. And I'll, I'll kind of try and show you why quickly. So let's say you have them linked. Basically what happens is every time that you change the colour you'll see that all three options change at the same time. Now this might sound handy but I find it really frustrating. For example, say I'm drawing a character and I draw his head and I want to fill it. I have to go to the fill, fill bucket, select the colour, so let's say red, and fill it. Then I go back to my brush tool and it's now red so I have to click on the black button, fill it in, or draw the draw the line and think, oh I want to fill that red again so I go to the, the paint bucket click red fill it in again and now I want to draw his arms so I go back to the brush I have to click on black and draw the arms etc and the legs or whatever as that's really frustrating so, so the way around that is to unlink your colors and then what happens is it only changes the color when you're selecting it so for example I'm currently on the brush and so now I'm going to choose a white brush for his eyes or something when I select that on the brush, you'll see it only changes the brush colour. So I can then draw some features on his face and go to the fill tool. Or let's, let's, let's just draw something else as well. Say his feet, that I'm going to do blue. Uh, I'm going to select the paint tool, you see, and then go blue. And you'll see that the brush stays black. I can fill that in and his feet um, are now blue. So this works really, really well. Um, and then I can go back to my brush again, and it's already on black, and draw something else. Go back to my fill, and it's already stuck on blue, etc. etc. So it's really, really handy. So, that, so definitely, definitely, I would recommend you turn that off. Don't link your colors. So the next tool down is the ink option. And basically, this um, only changes the color of your line. So if you've got a fully colored character and you think, oh, I really want to change the shape of the eyes to, or the, shape, the color of the eye outline to gray or whatever, you can do that, swipe over it, and it'll only change the line color, not the fill. Um, but it only works with um, pencil lines, not brush lines. So if I just show you, uh, if I select it and try and change this color here, which is a brush line, to red, it doesn't do anything. So I need to create my characters or my lines in pencil pencil lines. Let's just do that. And then you select the ink, select the fill option, not the line option, which is one slightly confusing thing, I think. So fill option, then change the color you want it to pick, and then swipe over it, and it will change. If you are on the pencil line tool, which would, for me is the, would be the natural option, um, and do it, it won't change the color. Um, so it has to be the fill color that you change and it will change any pencil lines for you. So the next option is paint unpainted. And quite simply, when you use this option, it will only paint an area that hasn't got paint in. 
quite simple. So at the moment, let's just fill something in with normal fill. Let's do our, our red again. And now I'll go to unpainted and pick blue. I will fill in these areas because they have no colour in them. If I try and fill the red, it won't do it because it already has paint in. That's quite a simple option. Next is repaint. So basically, again, that will only paint areas that already have paint in. So again, if I try and click on an empty area, it won't fill it. But if I try and recolour this red green, it will. There we go. Oh, let's, let's change that colour back. That's horrible green. Um, and then going down, unpaint obviously is a deleting option. So you click on an area that has paint in it and it will remove the paint colour. Come on, computer, you're being very slow today. Thank you. Like so. And then stroke and close gap. Now this goes back to our options up here in our tool property where we can close the gap. This is a sort of manual way of doing it. So if you've got a gap that you actually want to have on purpose, so let's say for example again I draw um, a nose um, and I want to keep this gap rather than fill it, what you can do is you can go to stroke. If you press K on your keyboard it will show strokes, which means that if, you, if I zoom in a little bit you'll see this blue line appear around the line, uh, around the lines. And you can use this icon to, to draw invisible lines. So I can select this and draw an invisible line on my nose. And then when I try and fill that normally, it will fill that gap with that line. And, and, and if I turn off the strokes you'll see that blue line disappears. And close gap, which is the last option, works in a very similar way but it's not as accurate as the previous one. But the other one will, will be a, like a drawn line, which is invisible. This one simply closes the gap. So if I do that, it's nice and straight. And if I try and do a curl, it makes it nice and straight. It basically, it just closes the gap for you. Um, so if you want it to not have a nice shape to it, always use the stroke uh, option. Um, saying that, I'm going through all those options. I hardly use any of them. I, I use paint, basically. I use the paint bucket most of the time. Um, so you probably you might use some of the other tools, you might not. If I've got a colour, for example, that I've filled already, let's say the eyes, and I want to change the colour, rather than using the um, repaint option, I, I normally just select it with the select tool and then just change the colour. So I mean, I, I very rarely, if at all, use any of the other options apart from the paint bucket. Sometimes I use the ink tool, particularly if I'm also using pencil lines with the character, um, which can be very helpful. But apart from that, I don't really ever use it. Um, but again, you might find some use in it. So now I've been through all the options, I'm just going to quickly colour in our Batman character and just show you um, the, how to use the palette, basically. So in the last episode, we created a Batman palette, which is here. So I'm going to click on that, and you'll see I've got the default one and it's kind of sketchy blue colour that I, I created last time. So for our Batman, I'm going to go for a kind of blacky grey colour with some sort of yellow for his belt and his, and his badge and stuff. So I'm going to create a new colour. So click on the default, create uh, by using the plus button, which creates a clone kind of colour of the default. Double click on it and I'm going to select a kind of darkish grey. Oh, and I should really rename that. Um, we'll call it Suit 1. Or something that will do. And I'm going to just click click in the areas that I want to be coloured in that colour. Come on, computer! Come on, computer! Why are you being so slow? Okay, and I'll do a, a lighter grey for his gloves and boots and pants and that kind of thing. So I better name that one Suit 2. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a slightly darker version of that one for the cape. So I'm going to click on that, create a new one, name that cape so we don't get confused, and then make a slightly darker version of that and fill the cape in. So lots of dark greys and blacks. Now one thing you mustn't forget is if you ever have any white areas like eyeballs or I mean, eyes and stuff, you have to you fill that in white. Because if you, see, if you don't, then it's basically invisible, so you'll get all the background behind your character. So once that's finished, I'll create a white to fill in his eyes. So I'll click on the default again, create white, 
and just name that white just so I know that it's for anything that's absolute white and we're going to fill in his eyes like so and then something for his skin so we'll go like a light brownie colour maybe slightly grey as well just to give him a bit of menace and now oh, better name that skin onto the badge so we'll go for a nice yellow a kind of golden yellow and we'll do his belt as well so with this I'll do a different couple of different colors so again I'll just just to kind of a bit of variety like a slight slightly different darker color for the belt as well so that'll be the edges of stuff. Make it slightly darker. Actually, I've got the Batman logo wrong, haven't I? That needs to be this way around. So we'll use one of our extra tools, shall we? Um, we will do repaint. Why not? Just for fun. And make, and make that the same colour as the suit. So everything's named. So there we go. The only one thing to mention is that um, you mustn't forget that if you ever change one of the colours in the palette that you've used on a character or a piece of background, that it will change in the screen. So let's for, say, for example, I select the suit colour, which is the main colour, and change, change it to red. The whole of Batman there will change it to red automatically. And that is the same for every instance that you've used that colour. So let's say you've got a kind of grey colour that you've used on a character and a background, and you've used the, the same palette for the same thing, and you change it. Every single instance of that colour will change. So if you want something that's similar, make sure that you um, create a different colour. And again, I, I've said it before, but I would make sure you use a different palette per character and per background and all that sort of thing. Don't have one massive palette for all your things. Create a different palette per character, per, per piece of background. That way you know it, everything's organized and set. So that if you use the same gray color in, in, in Batman in a background, for example, and you change the background gray, it won't change Batman. Um, so make sure you have something separate, a separate palette for each item. So that is it. I think we're done with the coloring video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. In the next video, I will be breaking uh, Batman up ready for rigging. So please come back and watch that one. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button above me. And if you want to watch any of the previous videos in the series so far, please click on one of the moving buttons above my head. And if you have any questions, please do leave a comment. I will get back to you as I can. Or send me a tweet on Twitter to at Mr. John Taylor, and I'll get back to you as fast as I can. Okay, and I'll be back hopefully next week with a new video. All right, bye for now.